Hi all. Today we are discussing about arousal theory. This theory mainly focuses on arousal. By definition, arousal is the physiological state of alertness and anticipation which prepares the body for function. This arousal which varies throughout the day. That is the arousal is low in level during we sleep and it is higher when we are performing activities that we find as exciting. According to this theory, what we seek is not minimal level of arousal but rather optimal arousal which means the level that is best suited to our personal characteristics. For example, if you are knitting which means crafting or other similar activities, a low level of arousal will be optimal and will be preferred. Otherwise, if you are competing in a sports event, a much higher one will be the best. The theory of arousal is connected to X Dodson law. The law was first described in 1908 by psychologists Robert X and John Dodson. The law states that there is a close link between arousal and performance. That is, for many tasks, when the performance increases, then the arousal raises with up to a point. Beyond that level, if it increases, actually it reduces the performance, which is called X Dorsen law. For example, in their experiment, X and Dorsen discovered that electrical shocks could motivate rats to complete a maze. However, when they overly shocked them, their performance level decreased and they simply just tried to escape. The experiment demonstrated that arousal level helped to focus attention on the task at hand but only up to a certain point. The anxiety you experience before an exam is the best example of how the law operates. An optimal level of stress can help you focus on the test and remember the information that you study. Too much stress anxiety can impair your ability to concentrate and make it more difficult to remember the correct answers. Next we move on to goal setting theory. Suppose that you are studying for an important exam. Do you ever tell yourself in advance that would not stop until you have read a certain number of pages, memorized some specific number of definitions or solved a fixed number of problems? Most people realize that they often accomplish more when they have a concrete goal than when they do not. This basic fact is central to goal setting theory. It was proposed by Edwin A. Loki in 1960s. Goal setting theory states that motivation can be strongly influenced by goals. That is, goal setting is essentially linked to task performance. A goal is a target objective that someone tries to accomplish. The theory assumes that setting specific and challenging but attainable goals can boost motivation and performance, especially when individuals are committed to reaching the goals and receive feedback on their progress. In this theory, goals must be set based on five principles. Clarity, challenge, Commitment, Feedback and Task complexity. First, Clarity The first characteristics of your goal is that they should be clear and concise. When you know exactly what you are trying to achieve, you can more easily to achieve it because you are better able to measure your result. For example, those who set a goal of making more sales are less successful than those whose goal is make 5% more sales than last year. Second one is challenge. Having a clear and concise goal is not enough to make it an effective one. It's nearly as important to make sure that the goal you set for yourself is also challenging. It should be enough to test your character and make you feel like you have really accomplished something. When your goal is realistic but challenging, it tends to be more motivated. Goal setting theory indicate that people are more successful when they set challenging goals. Third one is commitment. 
whether you are setting a goal for yourself your employees or whoever else in order to accomplish your goal you must first fully understand and agree to them a good way to refocus your commitment particularly if things get tough is through the use of a common positive psychology technique called visualization that is creating a mental image of what you will be like when you have achieved your goal fourth one is feedback regular reflection of your progress will help you stay on track stay motivated and ensure that your goals are still relevant in addition to selecting the right goals you should also listen to feedback so that you can measure how well you progressing feedback gives you the opportunity to clarify people's expectations and adjust the difficulty of their goals last one is task complexity take special care to ensure that work does not become too overwhelming when goals or assignments are highly complicated People who work in complicated and demanding roles can often push themselves too hard if they does not take account of the complexity of the task. By concluding this theory, it has been found that goal setting works under certain conditions. It is most effective in boosting performance when the goals set are trying to accomplish. When the goals are challenging, that is meeting them requires considerable effort from your part. but the goals are perceived as attainable finally goal setting is most successful when people receive feedback on their progress toward meeting the goals when they are trying and deeply committed to reaching them